Hi everyone, quick update to show you what I've been doing. Um, you've seen bits and pieces of this system before, but um, I've finished the web interface and software, web, web software, to control it, and I just thought I'd show you. Anyway, this is it here. Um, basically, it's um, a wrapper on top of the JSON API, which is the global system which will control this lifter. Um, we'll talk. This is mostly for maintenance and testing. Um, you can see here, this is the current position in millimeters. Mode switch switches the preset uh, presets here from recalling mode to storing mode, which if you want to store a position, you move in position, you press on a button and then it stores it. It also stores the acceleration and maximum velocity settings up here in that um, preset, which means you can have presets for the same position with different speed profiles. Um, so that you can either move to a position fast or move to a position slow or um, moving from a position to another position can have a different speed most of the time you'll probably find that it'll just be set to one setting which is a nice setting and you may have one that needs to go quick because it's going from one end of the axis to the other but most of the time it'll be just setting um, the reset switch here um, triggers the FPGA to do a homing sequence there's a finite state machine in the FPGA that looks after that it basically has a whole bunch of timeouts and um, things it needs to check as it goes through. So once it's triggered, the Linux core kernel doesn't do anything, the software doesn't do anything. It's handed off to the FPGA and it looks after it. So if I hit that switch now, you'll see um, it does a homing sequence. It's just hunting for the switch. It'll find the switch, then come off the switch and then zero in on the actual switch point. And there we go, now it's zero. You can see it's reset to zero. Um, the column lighting control here, this just controls a PW and core to generate you know, the RGB colors. Um, the reason why this is here uh, is for the global system because they use um, room lighting LEDs. They wanted to be able to color the column as well. So this allows them to set a mood from the global system um, to match the colors. Um, the API is more complicated than is shown here. Um, every time the lifter moves, there's a color that it can go to. Every time there's an error, there's a color it can show. Um, if there's a switch error, it's a color it can show. But anyway, I'll show you that in a minute. If I grab a little slider here, I'll just change this to a bit slower. If I can move it, you'll find it moves into position using that acceleration and that maximum velocity. Um, if I slow the acceleration down, you'll see it ramps more slowly or accelerates more slowly. Um, same as if I set the maximum velocity lower, it won't reach a top won't reach as high a top speed. Um, which you can set quite low minimum I set to three because anything below that's glacial. Um, the presets, as I said, store the acceleration and maximum velocity. So if I click on preset two It'll move to that position. If I click on preset 3, it'll move to that position using the same sort of speed because they'll obviously record at the same time. But position 1, uh, preset 1, sorry, has a different speed set. So if I click on that, you'll see it moves quite quickly. The, um, the single wall computer has a few flavorful problems. Well, not really problems, but <laughs> weird weirdness. Um, because it uses the um, for with um, a very small amount of I.O. The only I.O. available to it is an SPI uh, um, controller and that is interfaced to the FPGA. Now the FPGA acts as the CPU's I.O. GPIO outputs basically. Um, the vendors generated a small thing they call SBUS which is basically an SPI protocol that then talks to an FPGA core which converts um, the call or the, the bus to a wishbone compliant bus so all of the sub cores like my motion core and the disk core and all the other things all hang off the wishbone bus what that also means is of course the, the CPU doesn't have direct access to any of its um, disks um, talking to the core is kind of a bit problematic if you have an application that isn't all into mem isn't paged all in completely into memory and you pull a lock on the bus because you want to do something with the I.O. and for some unknown reason you fault 
and Linux tries to page the other part of your RAM memory into RAM, um, because you can't pull a lock on the bus, you then time out and get reset by the watchdog timer. So the way the vendor deals with that in this case is they um, they suggest you create a small application that talks to the FPGA using the bus that you communicate to communicate to via Unix domain sockets or some sort of socket server or something. So in this case, I have Mongoose which is running the web server um, effectively and doing all the maths and calculation using GMP, and then that is then sending um, messages to a socket driver or a Unix domain socket which is then talking to the FPGA via the SBUS to my wishbone compliant um, motion controller. Um, it is very cool now that it's all in the FPGA and I don't have to worry about the motion controller going crazy and running into the end of the axis and I don't have to worry about the non-real-time nature of the kernel whereas the previous instance of this system that I built um, I was using just the I.O. available from the vendor um, which with a non-real-time kernel and little applications being loaded in and out and the FPGA being pulled away to do other things on the bus for disk I.O. and all that sort of stuff meant if you're driving along towards the end of an axis and you hit a switch there's no interrupts, there's no catching it, you just have to wait for the system to come around and notice which meant on my previous system I would um, get to sort of within about 10 to 15 percent of the final destination and I would slow down and crawl to the last point and then also I would then factor in overshoot and then roll back to get within you know two or three pulse counts of the position I was wanting. Um, this system does have a small rounding error in the math because the integrator is quite large to deal with the um, the number of pulses for the system, the actual production system uses a 10 to 1 gearbox. Um, rather than dividing the clock down and doing all sorts of nasty stuff, well not nasty, but I actually needed the speed. Um, I ended up using a large integrator, which means the maths got quite large for a non-FP, non-floating point CPU to handle. So using GMP and software um, floating point fixed that problem, um, which means the maths isn't simple. It's it's not not complicated, but it, it's it, it it takes a bit to figure out the um, the relationship between the register values and real world um, because you've got screw screw pitch, you've got gearbox, you've got pulse uh, counts, you've got um, uh, micro steps. Then you have you know the the relationship between meters a second, uh, millimeters a second, millimeters a second squared. Um, all of the all of the usual physics to go along with it. Um, the maths is fairly simple, but as I said, when you put all those factors together, it can get very complicated very quickly. I had the FPGA core written very fast and 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 um, working to itself, but relating those values to real world took a long time. Um, and then you also with the um, FPGA, sorry, the um, CPU not having photo point made things a little bit harder as well. Um, the rounding error I was talking about before, um, I deal with by reloading the integrator's values back into the CPU before each subsequent calculation, which means that the rounding error is limited to the one calculation. So rather than just assuming the software knows where it is in the world, which it, it really does, um, but if I kept calculating based on that, um, there'd be a cumulative error, which means eventually I'd be out of position, whereas reloading the world, real world position back into the calculation means the calculation error is limited to that one calculation. Um, and even then, the error is, you know, pff, microns because the um, integrator is so large. But anyway, um, I'll cut this one short. I just wanted to show you what I've been doing and how it sort of works. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time.